Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the Android 10 October security update. Uh, we will start by downloading a few things. So let's head over to our computer here. And the first thing we want to download is the latest version of the SDK platform tools. Now platform tools is just a collection of programs and utilities that we can use to communicate with our phone via the USB cable uh, through these command line based programs. So let's download the one for our operating system here by clicking on the appropriate link, agreeing with the terms and conditions, and then clicking on the blue download button. And you can just save this all in one folder. And now once you've downloaded that, we also need to download the latest factory image for our Pixel 2. So let's head over to Walleye or Timon, depending on which device you have, and scroll down to the bottom and let's download the latest version here, which is this one ending in A1. So you click on the blue download link and just save everything in one folder as well. And once you've downloaded that, we also need to download the latest version of TWRP, which is from April. So you probably already have this. So, but anyways, the latest version at the time of recording is 3.3.0-0. So download the image here. So you can go to click on it and then you have to click on the big link here that downloads the TWRP image and save that in the same folder. And you'll also need to go back, and if you want, this is optional, you'll also want to download the uh, installer zip file for the same version, and you can download it the same way. And last thing we want to download is the latest version of Magisk Beta, at least. So let's scroll down here and click on the latest beta, download that, and save that in the same folder as everything else. So version 19.4, at least, for Android 10, and that's all we need. You may also want to download the latest Magisk uninstaller as well, just in case you need that. But in the end, we should have these four files with us, which is good. And what we need to do now is start extracting these files, preparing it for updating our phone. So first things first, we wanna open up the platform tools folder and drag out and extract the platform tools folder inside. Now, if you've already used this before, you can use the same ones provided they are up to date. So if you use them in September sometime, you should be okay using the same ones. Uh, and this is only necessary for those who don't already have the platform tools added to their path environment variable. Uh, I do have a video on that down below. It's very useful if you plan on doing this a lot. And the next thing we want to extract is or open up is the factory image. We want to go inside this folder here and we want to extract the bootloader, the image zip file and the radio image outside into our Android folder, just like so. I'm going to fast forward this extraction here. Okay, so we've done that and we can close the factory image. Uh, we need to do one more thing on our computer. We need to open up the platform tools folder and we need to open up a command prompt window inside this folder so we can use the programs. Uh, what you need to do is go up to the address bar and type in CMD and that will open up the command prompt window with the directory already changed to the platform tools. So when we type in fastboot, we can actually use those programs and we can type in ADB and we can also use those, which is good. So I'm going to use my console emulator instead. It allows me to zoom in and do all sorts of cool stuff. So let me just uh, reposition my windows accordingly and we can now get started with updating our phone. So you need to go back to the platform tools folder, sorry, and go back up one folder to the Android folder where everything else is and now we can get started. So let's go over to our phone and we need to reboot our phone into the bootloader. But before we do, you need to go to Magisk Manager and have a look at the modules that you have installed. Now, I personally don't have any, but if you happen to have the Active Edge module, uh, the one that allows you to customize the squeeze function of the Pixel 2 device, um, you need to either update it to make sure that it supports the latest October update Although I've read that this module now contains a kind of self-disabled script in case you have an older version of the mod, you update and then it's incompatible. Uh, it should be able to disable itself so your phone can actually turn on properly and allow you to update it and whatnot. But it's always either important to update before you update your phone. So, so update the modules or disable them before updating and then just re-download the module again and after you've updated and make sure it supports the October security update. But I know that at least version 51 of this does support it. So if you have this installed, just make sure it's at least version 51. And once you've done that, let's go 
and reboot our phone into the bootloader. So to do that, I'm going to tap on restart here. And as soon as the screen turns black or freezes up, I'm going to hold the volume down button. Okay, so I'm going to hold that down now and just keep holding it until we get into the bootloader. It may take a while, so keep holding that. Okay, there we are. So it doesn't matter what this says up here. Some people were confused when it was in download mode. Uh, but don't worry, this is just an option, a menu. So it doesn't matter what you're in. And once you're in the bootloader, which is the main thing, we need to go over to our command prompt again. So that's on our computer. We just need to double check that our device is connected properly and we can type in fast boot devices. And there we go, our serial number is connected there. If you don't see your phone there, uh, you might wanna check out the device manager, which you can do by right clicking on the start button and selecting device manager and just making sure that you can see your phone here. Uh, it may have a little orange exclamation mark, a warning sign next to it, meaning that you'll need to update the device drivers. And I will have a video on that link down below as well. Uh, but if your device is connected, we can move right along in updating the bootloader. So to do that, we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader and drag in the bootloader image. Now, if you can't do this, there is a way to, uh, I guess, copy the location or the path of this image that we need. You can do that by holding shift and right clicking on the file and then selecting the option copy as path. And once you click on that, you can actually paste in the path of the file into the command prompt by right clicking and that'll appear like so. And you only need to do that if you can't drag in your files, okay? So we're going to flash the bootloader like this, hit enter. Now it says too many links, uh, which is bad. Uh, but that's all right, let's just try reboot our phone back into the bootloader once more. Do some uh, troubleshooting here. So we can do that by typing in fast boot, reboot bootloader. And you can see that our phone probably isn't happy with that. So let's press control C to break that command. Or well, you can say cancel. And what I'm going to do is just replug my phone into the computer. Sometimes it's just as simple as that. But if not, we'll go and investigate a little further. So let's try the fast boot flash bootloader command again. And it's still there. Okay, so maybe I spelled bootloader wrong. Bootloader. Let's try again. Okay, so that's better. I'm not sure why that was the case. Sometimes it's just a little bit funny, although I did I actually type in the wrong bootloader? But anyways, uh, let's not dwell on that. Once the bootloader has been flashed, we need to restart our phone back into the bootloader for the new bootloader to take effect. So let's type in uh, fastboot reboot bootloader and hit enter. And our phone should restart into the new bootloader. Just give it a moment to do so. Okay, there we are, so that's good. And now let's also type in the commands to update the baseband or the radio partition. So let's type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space after that and drag in the radio image and hit enter. And this will update that, which is good. And then let's reboot our phone back into the bootloader once more again. So we can press the up arrow key to go back through our previous commands and hit enter. And there we go. So we'll wait for our phone to turn on again. And once that's done, we can now go ahead and uh, update the system. So we can type in the words fastboot and we're going to type in double dash, type in skip dash reboot. This will prevent our phone from rebooting automatically after the update command is finished. And we also need to type in the word update, leave a space after update and drag in the image file or zip file. So not the factory image, but the image zip file and hit enter. Now this will make sure you have the latest bootloader and radio image that accompanies the image zip file. And then we'll slowly extract everything and flash it to our device. And after that, we're going to boot up TWRP and see if we can access our data partition. I did have a screen lock on uh, with a pin code. So chances are Android 10 and screen lock, you probably won't be able to access your data partition. So that means the things that we copied over earlier when we copied over the Magisk zip file and the TWRP installer, uh, we probably won't be able to access those, which is all right. So what we can do is actually use ADB sideload. 
uh, to flash those files and hopefully that works as well. So this is a little bit of trial and error right now. Okay, so now that we've done the update command, let's boot up the Tito repeat image. And this is where we need to cross our fingers a little bit, I guess. Well, we never know what it's like updating to a next major version of Android, let alone security updates. We'll just hopefully uh, hope for the best for Tito repeat to work. So we can do that by typing in fastboot space boot, leave a space after the word boot, and we're gonna drag in our Tito repeat image. This allows us to temporarily boot the TWRP image, and you can see our phone is turning on, which is a good sign. Uh, but I, I can just assume a few things. Um, the system, we should be able to read, at least, read and write. The data partition, I don't think we'll be able to decrypt. Um, so let's try it. So my password was, okay, probably it can't decrypt. So if you can't decrypt your data partition, that's all right, just hit cancel and you can swipe to allow modifications if we need to. And we should be able to at least see the system. So what we can do is use ADB sideload. So we need to go to advanced and then tap on ADB sideload. And I'm going to swipe to start the sideload here. And the first thing we want to sideload is the TWRP installer. Uh, this is optional in a way. If you don't want to have TWRP installed permanently on your phone, or at least persistently, um, you don't have to sideload the TWRP installer. In fact, you can just sideload the Magisk zip file and be on your merry way. So, but I'm going to demonstrate installing the TWRP well, to our phone anyways. So let's type in ADB sideload, leave a space after sideload and drag in the TWRP installer and hit enter. And this will slowly stream the zip file after the daemon starts um, to our phone here, as you can see it going through up to 48% and it's going to start running the script on our phone here. So you can see that it's installing TWRP. I hope that's somewhat in focus. Uh, it's going to install it to our phone here. Okay, and that's done. So that's good. We can go back and let's reboot our phone into the recovery just to make sure that TWRP has installed itself properly. And in this scenario here, when it asks you, do you want to install TWRP as a system app? I highly recommend not doing this because Android is sometimes picky about the system being modified. So I'm going to uncheck both of these and tap on do not install. And we're going to wait for our phone to reboot itself back into the recovery, which should have been replaced or which TWRP should have been installed to. So let's wait for that to turn on and it should be turning into TWRP. And it is, which is good. So now, well, we can try decrypting again and it probably won't work. Yep, we can hit cancel. We can uh, swipe to allow modifications there. We need to go back to the advanced menu and tap on sideload and swipe to start the sideload. And from there, we need to sideload the Magisk beta zip file. So let's type in ADB sideload again, leave a space after that and drag in, uh, let's say the Magisk zip file and hit enter. And that will slowly stream the or Magisk to our phone. And you can see it's already starting to work properly. Uh, before, if it wasn't able to mount the system or read from it at all, it wasn't able to continue due to it being uh, or necessary for it to read at least some of the system files. And you can see that everything is done here. We can tap on reboot system. And again, that hasn't remembered that we don't want it. So let's tap on do not install and let's wait for our phone to reboot into Android. Okay, our phone has turned on, which is a, always a good sign. So let's just unlock it. Everything is still here, which is good. We've updated to Android Q, which is good. So that's fine. We can leave that to completed system update. Let's have a look at Magisk Manager here and we should all be up to date. So I still have it stuck on the Canary channel. So if I change that to beta, because that's the one we installed, we should see that we are fully up to date, which is good. We can check safety net and do all that. And everything is looking good. So that's how you update your rooted Pixel 2 to the October security update. Now, as you saw, we didn't have to start from Android 10. We could have done it anywhere else. So that's always a good sign as well. So thanks for watching, guys. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. But I highly recommend hopping on 
Discord and joining us there it just makes it a lot easier to keep track of conversations and to get notified when people need help. So if you have any other thoughts or questions, you can leave them down below. But if you really want help, I recommend coming over to our Discord server just so we can uh, help you out a lot easily or easier. And as always, happy flashing.